My name is uh, Jose Rojo, and uh, I practice medicine in, in, in Spain. That's where I, I did my, uh, most of my studies. And in, it, this was published in 2013 in the, in the Journal of Ultrasound and Medicine. Ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release. We call it ultra minimally invasive surgery, and we defined uh, ultra minimally invasive procedures as the one performed through through a one millimeter um, incision. I was visiting a events in, where, in which they, the people bring different um, uh, ship models to see. Uh, which one they like best, I guess. It's a kind of like a competition. I mean, it was amazing to see all the level of detail on those, on those models. And, and then I, you know, I turned around uh, and got into another room and I, I saw that there were people that were doing the same models, the same difficulty inside bottles. And I thought, oh wow, I mean, this is what, what we need for surgery. I mean, we need to be able to build that inside the bottle. We need to be able to to do what these guys are, are, are doing, to work through that small hole and see through a solid media so that we can build and work inside. And thinking about when I was walking out of that, of that convention, um, I, I thought, well, okay, so let's think about the technology we, we have, uh, we have nowadays. Uh, what could make the, the skin uh, be transparent? And, and that, that's where the ultrasound thing came up. I'm, I'm here today because I, I fortunately know uh, Dr. Cobbs first uh, professionally because uh, all of our research in carpal tunnel uh, syndrome is based on, on his concept and his description uh, of the anatomy of, of the carpal tunnel. And it happens that on my right hand, I have a, a, a carpal tunnel syndrome. I've been suffering it, uh, this thing for now six years and I'm the worst possible patient. So I, I've just been you know, pushing it and thinking, okay, well, perhaps I'll think about it tomorrow, but it's now affecting me. And so here, here we are, we're gonna do it today. <laughs> okay, I'll be assisting him, and so that um, we'll be um, surgeon and assistant uh, with the same patient. I've been watching ultrasound for quite some time, and uh, I felt like it wasn't really ready, at least from a procedural standpoint yet. Uh, but last year I had the opportunity to co-moderate of course, at the Fesh hand meeting in Milan, Italy. And I went to Dubai to, to see his ultra minimally invasive uh, carpal tunnel release. And uh, Jose's really perfected the uh, technique, and uh, so much so that he's able to do a carpal tunnel release through a one millimeter incision. And so he was here for the uh, academy meeting in uh, Orlando a few weeks back and was visiting some family in, in uh, Texas and flew up from Dallas uh, and we released his carpal tunnel uh, here. So the long and short of it is I really feel that ultrasound is now ready uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the main scene. In the same way that the arthroscope allowed for minimally invasive procedures years ago, I believe that the ultrasound is gonna take minimally invasive surgery to the next level. I need to, to expect what I see on all, on all patients and also what we've been publishing. Um, this is, uh, a procedure that is taking three to five times less uh, for functionally being recovered. We're using the hand for most daily activities, it's five times faster than, than, a, than a mini open incision, which is a, a, two uh, a one to two centimeter incision. And for, um, for fully lifting weights, it's three times less. So I know that I, I should expect uh, this, this margin, I mean, three to five times uh, um, faster recovery. And um, also, I mean, with this kind of procedure, um, the, the incision is very small, so I just, I just should need a, a, a sticking plaster. And, and I always, always tell my patients to do all of their normal activities, even after surgery. So um, I never restrict them from trying to lift that chair or using a keyboard, j even at, just right after surgery. And so, I always tell my patients, and I tell, I tell myself now, that I'll be able to do all, um, all that I can. This means I can, I can um, wonder if I'll be able to keyboard. The answer I tell my patients, I mean, the way I tell my patients to answer that question is just try to, to do it. If, uh, if you can, just do it. If you feel some pain, wait till, wait till tomorrow and try again. But the, the, the operation should not be restricting me for trying to do it or for doing it. It will be driven by the amount of pain, the pain. 
There's, um, there's patients that have a little bit more pain or will have more pain. Some others have no pain. So I've seen both, both uh, extremes. And, and, and the average, as I say, is three to five times uh, better in, in uh, function pain uh, recovery. Now we put a three-three. That was it. easy enough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's been uh, 10 to 15 minutes since we did the procedure. The tip of my thumb was a bit numb, because uh, that was the way it was uh, for the past months. And I, I cannot feel that numbness anymore in, in, in the tip of it. And the right, uh, the index wasn't, wasn't completely normal either. And intermittently, of course, it was very numb. Uh, and now I'm not able to find that spot either. So, so far, 15 minutes late after surgery, I'm part of the lucky guys that, that feel much better uh, sooner. It's not, it's not what happens always. It's been now 72 hours since uh, Dr. Tyson Cobb and myself, we operated together on the same patient, which was uh, me, myself. This is what the wound looks 72 hours after the operation. And we can see there's basically, basically no, no signs of hematoma. The wound is, like, is around one millimeter. And there's no pain when I touch or when I press. There's a very mild pain here when I press deeply. This is a curve, I would say, that's been going on with pain at, at rest on the, on the first uh, three days. For the first uh, 36 hours, perhaps a bit longer, almost two days, I was I was having intermittent pain that would be in between 0 0.5 and and one out of out of ten on a scale of uh, of ten, and I started doing one, two, three, four, five. I can feel some pain. There's still like two out of ten probably uh, pain-wise, but there's there's something else quite nice to see that you can do this with this kind of operation. And of course, you cannot do any of this with a standard operation. I don't see a way. To do it without being un un uh, safe, you know. But if you wanted to take the bar like this and do pull, pull up, I, I feel that there's basically no pain for doing all these pull ups I'm doing. So it's probably 0 0.5. But I, I feel that fortunately uh, the operation is, is standing all this uh, stress test and that I'm basically very happy as a patient. So I sincerely feel that. The, the operation, the way we designed it and the way uh, we implemented it, makes a, it, it makes a very a large difference with uh, previous operations. Especially when in my case, I don't know if you can see it here, I had a previous accident and I had my carpal tunnel release. It was a large uh, release and it was due to a, another injury, it wasn't because of a carpal tunnel itself, but I, I really felt um, that this was painful. It is not the same as, as this time with this thing. So that's basically it. Thank you very much. We may meet in another occasion.